simple interest on a certain sum at 7% per annum for 4 years is 3584. What will be the compound interest on the same principle at 4% per annum in 2 years? So he's saying that simple interest on a certain principle, certain sum is nothing but certain principle at 7% per annum. The rate of interest here is 7% per annum for 4 years was 3584. The total interest is 3584. What will be the compound interest on the same principle at 4% per annum in 2 years, right? Now, if you are uh, the one who follows the regular procedure, right? If you follow the traditional method, this question would easily take about 2 minutes for you to get the right answer. Right? What, what do we have to do? We know that simple interest is equal to 3584 when the rate is equal to 7% per annum and time is 4 years. We have to find out the compound interest for the same principle uh, but at 4% per annum in 2 years. So what is CI for the same principle when the rate is 4% per annum and time is just 2 years. Now you know that to calculate compound interest we need principle, rate and time. Right, all three are required principal time and rate of interest. Rate of interest and time are given to us 4% in two, uh, 2 years. But what is not known here is the principal amount. So, what do we do first? We'll first try to calculate the principal amount. How can that be done? Using these three values SI is given, R is given, and T is given. Calculate the principal. You know that SI equals to PTR by 100. So, we'll say 3584 equals to P into T, that is 4 years, into R, 7 by 100. From this, you will calculate the principal amount. That is 3584 into 100 divided by 4 into 7. Maybe you will cancel this 25 times and you will do the cancellation with 7 there, which will be about uh, 512, right? Uh, 512 into 25 will give you the principal. Once you have got the principal amount, then you will use the compound interest formula. What is the compound interest formula? CI will be equal to P of 1 plus R by 100 whole raised to the power of T minus P. You know the new principle, the value that you have calculated here, R and T are given, 4 and 2, substitute. Or you can take P common here. If you take P common, what happens? We'll get 1 plus R by 100, whole to the power of T minus 1. So substitute the three values, P, R and T in this equation, simplify it and get the required answer. Right? You'll get the right answer. Now understand, when you start doing this calculation, it is going to take easily up to 2 minutes for you to get the final answer. This would take some time, right? This is anyway a simple one, but it requires... Uh, some effort there and then more than that this component is calculation is very tedious 1 plus r by 100 whole to the power of t 1 plus 4 by 100 whole square minus 1 simplify this then multiply with principal right whole lot of calculation there so if at all you don't have any other method of answering the question right if you don't know a smarter way of getting the answer if this is what is in your mind right the moment you read the question if this is your thought process see you don't think too much i mean the moment you read the question you will know that yes this is the process so in 2-3 seconds or maybe in 5 seconds after you finish reading the question, you would realize the effort required, right? The amount of calculation, the amount of uh, simplification required. There. So if at all this is your thinking process, I would say after that 5 seconds you should leave it. Don't touch, don't start answering it, right? Leave and move to the next one. 2 minutes of calculation, don't do that. Look for easier questions. Of course, mark it for review. Get the point. Don't leave it just like that. Mark it for review, which means if time permits, after half an hour or within that half an hour, if you have finished all the 40 questions and you, if you still have 2 minutes or 3 minutes left out, come back to this question because here you know how to answer. The only challenge is lengthy calculation. So you have left it. So if something like this comes to your mind, I would say skip. Keep it for review, move to the next one. But since you are a banker's choice student, I am sure you will not follow this process, right? This is, this is a crime. Doing this is, you know, it will of course give you the right answer, but I would say that you know, only criminals should follow this, right? I mean, or, or this is not a mistake. It is a crime. You understand what I mean there? What is the smarter way of getting the answer? No need to calculate the principle. If you are strong in your percentages uh, concepts, if you know how to use SI and CI using the concepts of percentages without calculating the principal amount, you can directly get the answer here. Only one calculation is what you need to do here. What, what is the idea now? Rate of interest is 7%. Time is 4 years. What will be the total simple interest? 7% in 4 years, 28%, right? Every year I get 7%. In 4 years we get 28%. That 28% is equal to 3584. Yes or no? So I can see that 28% is equal to 3584. 
what do we have to calculate the compound interest on the same principle that's the most important point principal anyway is going to be the same which means what is principal 100% for you principal is nothing but 100% so it says that whatever is 100% for SI same is 100% for CI so I don't have to calculate that 100% with respect to this percentage equivalent I can get the answer I don't need to calculate what is 100% to find out the CI there so what do I do 28% equals to 3584 now rate of interest is 4% and the time period is 2 years what happens 4% and 2 years you know that CI can be calculated as A plus B plus AB by 100 so 4 plus 4 plus 4 into 4 by 100 which is 8 plus 16 by 100 is 0 0.16 8 0.16 so 28% is this 8.16% equals to what cross multiply and you will get your answer I am sure you are clear with this part how do we get 8.16 4 plus 4 plus 4 into 4 by 100 those who all say that I don't know how to get this or I don't know the uh, you know detailed explanation behind this go watch the simple interest and compound interest video right uh, in that we have in detail we have discussed how to use this effective percentage formula in calculating compound interest that's it do this cross multiplication and you get the answer now if we say that even this calculation is difficult how should I multiply 8.16 with 3584 and divide by 28 then no one can help only you need to carry a calculator secretly in the exam if caught gone otherwise you will get the answer in, in a very simple manner right so it is difficult I understand the calculation difficult as in not difficult but not not easy like the other ones you have to do it the more you practice on your calculations the easier it becomes right if you are smart see what is the final solution 3584 into 8.16 divided by 28 that's it now it will become difficult if you start cancelling these with 2 you will cancel 3584 by 2 you will cancel 28 by 2 or you will cancel by 4 each or you will cancel by you know something else right don't do that right directly try to divide 3584 by 28 how do you do that 3584 is not 3584 it is 2800 plus 784 you know why why 2800 plus 784 why not something else why not 3000 plus 584 we are taking it as 2800 plus 784 because I have to divide it by 28 2800 by 28 is 100 784 by 28 again 784 is not 784 700 plus 84 now why are we taking 700 plus 84 because I know that 700 is divisible by 28 700 is how many times 28 5 uh, 25 times you understand 700 is 2800 by 4 which means 100 by 4 times or 25 times so 3584 can be split as 2800 plus 700 plus 84 getting the point this is 100 times 2800 by 28 is 100 times 700 by 28 is 25 times Yes or no? 7 by 28 is 1 by 4. 100 by 4 is 25. 84 by 28. 28 into 3 is 84. 60 plus 24, 84, right? This is 3 times. So finally, it is 100 plus 25 plus 3, 128. So what's your answer? 128 into 8.16. Now again, you don't have to multiply 128. What's the point? You know, forget about this decimal here. 128 into 816. And then put uh, a decimal after two places. Yes or no? Don't, don't worry about this decimal point here. Multiply 128 by 816. Whatever answer you get, keep two decimal. I mean, keep a decimal after two places. It will give you the final answer. But if you are smart, you will not do that. What do you do? Understand. Multiply 128 with 8. Multiply 128 with 8. Then multiply 128 with 16. Now, why are we doing it? Why, why are we not going for something else? Because once you have multiplied with 8, 16 is readily available. Only you have to double it. Right? Let's, let's understand. 128 into 8. How do you do this? 128 into 8 split again 128 is not 128 it is 100 plus 20 plus 8 or 125 plus 3 or 130 minus 2 or 110 plus 18 whatever is comfortable for you right so let's take 100 plus 20 plus 8 this is 100 plus 20 plus 8 100 into 8 800 20 into 8 160 8 into 8, 64. See, I am writing it on paper, but you don't have to, right? You have to visualize and uh, start doing these calculations. So, 800 plus 160, 960. 960 plus 64, 1024. So, 128 into 8 is 1024. A better way of doing it is split 128 as 125 plus 3, if you have got the idea, right? 128 is, you know, you can also take it as 125 plus 3. Why 125? Because I have to multiply 125 with 8. 125 into 8 is 1000. 125 into 8000 
3 into 8, 24. 1000 plus 24, 1024. So the point is 128 into 8 is 1024. So 128 into 16 will be double of this. What is double of 1024? 2048. But since it has got decimal after two places, I will keep decimal after two places. 20.48. Add these two values. 1024 plus 20, 1044. 0.48 would be your answer. See, it looks to be lengthy because I'm explaining in detail, right? I'm doing this calculation part. But if you do it by yourself without writing these individual calculations on paper, without putting a pen on paper, I'm sure you'll get the answer uh, really fast, right? So two points here, two important points. If you want to follow the traditional method where you calculate the principle and then you go for compound test calculation, leave it. Makes no sense. The only way to get the answer faster or uh, the only way to make it worth it is follow the smart procedure. And this also is easy only if you are good at calculations, right? So practice more and more on your calculations, you will get the answers faster.